Hi, and welcome to Alien Gear Holsters YouTube Live. So, today we're going to be talking about Glocks again. This time we're going to be covering pretty much the two most popular of all the Glock pistols. And that, of course, means the 19 and the 26. Now, these are the more or less the two most popular guns that they actually sell as far as civilians are concerned. And uh, when it comes to all of the holsters that we sell, two of the best sellers per uh, perennially are for the 19 and, of course, the 26. So these are two very, very popular concealed carry guns. And incidentally, they are both supported in the ShapeShift modular holster system, as you can see. So we got this, this shell for the 26 and this for the 19. Yeah, so a bit about these two guns. The Glock 19 came out in the late 1980s, and it was really intended for uh, plainclothes police officers and uh, for the you know and for those personnel that wanted to carry a uh, carry a very functional pistol, but wanted something a little bit smaller. At the, at the time, there was a concealed carry market. It was out there, but it wasn't nearly what it is today. Uh, the late 1980s was when the second wave of shall issue laws were first starting to get passed you know and starting kind of starting in Florida and a few other states from there so it, the concealed carry market wasn't nearly as much of a concern for gun makers as the law enforcement and military markets were that said the 19 and uh, I'm going to show you here that we have an empty magazine empty chamber just so just so you're aware that we're safe so the 19 was really intended, you know, heavily for plainclothes police officers and uh, you know those personnel that wanted a carry gun, but wanted one smaller than most of the duty pistols of the day. Now, the thing about the 19 for the you know for the late 1980s, it was it was actually kind of revolutionary. It's incredibly light, it's very compact, and also carries about the same number of rounds as a lot of the popular duty guns or semi-automatic duty guns anyway of that era. So, you know, if you look at, say, the Beretta 92, SIG P226, you know, th you know, those are the really popular ones. They carry about 15 or 16 rounds of, uh, you know, of 9mm. Glock 19, 15 plus 1 and 9mm. So, it carried about as much as the big guns, yet was obviously a whole lot smaller and easier for people with smaller hands to, uh, to actually carry and operate and all those sorts of things. That made the 19 very popular. As time went on, it also became very popular for concealed carry for fairly, ob for, you know, fairly obvious reasons. Everything I just mentioned. It's one of the smallest big guns that you can actually carry. So it's got a four inch barrel, it handles most, am you know, it'll handle all the standard duty ammo and it's actually pretty easy to pack. That made it very, very popular. The 19, of course, gave way to the 26 as far as, you know, for a lot of concealed carriers because it is quite a bit smaller. Oh, and uh, just so, you, just so uh, we're being safe, clear chamber, empty magazine. 26, this came out in the late 90s. Now, this was a little bit more intended towards the concealed carry market and also as a backup gun for law enforcement. So, a lot of the same benefits. Nice and light, carried a decent amount, 10 plus 1 of 9 millimeter, and uh, eminently totable. You know, very easy pistol to pack around every day, very easy to conceal. That made it incredibly popular. And like I said, these two, when it comes to like uh, the most popular holster models that we actually sell, these two are at the top of the list. Uh, they are the most popular ones that, uh, that we sell to people. So, they're both very, very popular concealed carry guns. And aftermarket support for both of them is just absolutely ridiculous. Every little thing you can imagine can, uh, can be upgraded on these. So, uh, you know, if, you, if you're the sort of person who likes to customize, you know, add a, add a better trigger, you know, uh, spice up the sights, all that sort of thing, these are two great platforms that you can actually do it with because of the just sheer volume of aftermarket support they have. And, of course, you know, you're going to be able to find one in any gun store. They're available pretty much everywhere, and they are just, 
they're not too difficult to pick up as, as far as cost goes. They're fairly cost effective, they're accurate, they're reliable, they're pretty good to shoot. You know, there's there are just so much win. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So to go over the dimensions. The 19 has a four inch barrel. It's about 7.3 inches long, 1.18 inches wide, and 5 inches tall. Weighs 24 ounces unloaded. So, you know, like I said, big improvement over the carry guns of, uh, of the day when it came out, you know, it, most of which weighed closer on the order of 30 to 35 ounces for the big, big Wonder 9s. Carries 15 plus 1 of 9mm, and uh, like I said, Small, it's the smallest big gun you can carry. The 26, it's about a three and a quarter inch barrel, six, about uh, six and a half inches long, also 1.18 inches wide, and about 4.17 inches tall with the flush with the flush fit magazine. Carries 10 plus one of nine millimeter, weighs about 21 ounces unloaded. Very, very light, very easy to carry. I think we got a question out there? Yeah, we've got a guy named Tomias. I believe I'm saying that right. I got a 3.0 about a year ago. How do I order a shell for my wife's new Ruger? Oh, as far as for uh, with the 3.0? Well, you can order a shell a la carte off of uh, off of our website. If you go to our uh, if you go to our uh, shop now, uh, you know, you'll find the uh, you'll find the button on the website. You'll be able to navigate your way into additional holster shells. And uh, what was that? Which Ruger was that? It's a Ruger LCRX three inch. Oh, okay. Yeah, we sh uh, LCRX three inch. Yeah, you should be able to find shells. The problem there is it's not going to fit on your regular holster base uh, because if you have a holster a three holster base for an auto, the LCRX is a uh, is a revolver. So you're going to need a revolver. You're going to need a revolver base. So what you're going to want to do, find our search by gun page, look up Rugers, or look up the revolvers, and you should be able to see the available Rugers. I forget if we have the LCRX, but I'm pretty sure that we do. But you should be able to find it there. So you're going to need to get that. That said, so as we've gone over, 26 or the uh, 19. Very small for a uh, you know for having the parameters of a big gun. Very easy to pack. 26, just incredibly easy to conceal and carry this thing. So you might find yourself wondering which one should I get? Well, you could just go ahead and get both because variety is the spice of life. And you know, what's one more gonna hurt? But anyway, <laughs> which one should you actually get? Well, you know, it kind of depends on. Uh, on what exactly you're looking to get out of it. Okay, so it's not so much that one is you know, dyed in the wool better than the other, it's just that there's one that's gonna be better for you. Okay, just uh, you know, like so many other things. I mean, in, in either case, you get a great gun. These are like the Honda Civics of, uh, of carry pistols, okay? Like, it's gonna be reliable, you're gonna be, you're gonna have it for years, it, it's gonna be just fine. Now the thing about the 19, like I said, it's the smallest big gun that you can actually carry, right? So if you're at all concerned about that, if you want something closer to a service pistol, and that's and that's a thing for some people, you know, there are some people out there that you know when they get a carry gun, it's full size or bust, you know, don't care. I'm not messing with that little gun. I you know I want something large enough for, that I can really rely on it, you know. Uh, there are people for whom that is a thing. And that's totally cool. You know, carry what you want, what works for you. That's totally fine. For that person, the Glock 19 is actually going to be a great fit. You know, it car carrying capacity is ample. It's really easy to shoot these things very, very well because of it. They are, you know, uh, recoil despite the lightweight, very easily managed, and you can shoot the 19 all day without problems. Okay, they're, they're awesome. It's just a great gun. There's a good, good number of reasons why they're so popular. Okay, they're great. Some say it's darn near the perfect gun as far as it goes. I can't entirely disagree. 
So it's awesome. But what would stop some people, it is a tad big. You know, it, it is a tad big for some people anyway. And they just find that it's a little bit too much to be a little bit too much inside the waistband. And so as a result, that sort gravitates more towards the Glock 26 here. Uh, no one will ever have a problem concealing and carrying one of these. Right? You know, you, you just won't. They are so, so easy to conceal and carry. And that's part of the reason why these things got so popular. You know, uh, the baby Glocks got really popular for good reason. They're easy to pack, you know, easy to conceal, and you get 10 plus 1 rounds, that's all you're really going to need if you're, if you're a civilian carrier. You, know, you really just couldn't go wrong. But what stops some people on these, there are, you know, it, some people do, you know, not necessarily enjoy shooting compacts as much as they enjoy shooting a full size. You know, they, there's a little bit more snap, a little bit more in terms of recoil due to the, uh, you know, due to the shorter barrel. And some people don't really like it. And a truth about carry guns is you should carry what you shoot well. And if you don't shoot compacts well, then you shouldn't carry a compact. You should carry a full size. You, sh you should carry something that you shoot very well. And some people might have issues with this, especially those that are recoil sensitive. Although it's, as far as recoil goes, it's actually very, very reasonable. Like no one should really ever have a problem. Also, what gives some people fits is the short grip. So, uh, so um, as you can see on, on my hand, I'm going to use my left hand for illustrative purposes. As you can see, I leave the pinky off. I, I have to leave the pinky off there. And I don't like to shoot like that. I want a good full grip, although with the 26, there are plenty of grip extensions out there, so you can get a, you know, you can get a pinky, a, a pinky plate that goes, on the, uh, that goes on the bottom of your magazine, or an extended magazine. Cool feature of these, out of the Glock 9mm platforms, the double stacks, so the, the 17, the 19, the 26, and also I believe it's the 34, that's the long slide version. All the magazines are compatible, okay? So the 19 magazine, as you can see, fits the 26. And what a lot of people will do is they'll buy a 26, magazines for the 19, and get a grip sleeve. And so that way, you get a full grip, but you still have, this, you still have the shorter slide and barrel for easy concealment. Fairly, fairly popular thing that a lot of people like to do. But that said, the shorter grip is going to put a few may put a few people off the 26. So, uh, and also, you know, uh, go shoot both of them. You may find you're better with one. You may find you're better with one or the other, or that you like handling one over the other. It's really all about you. Pick the best one for you. And so, ultimately, if you're going to decide between the two of them, you know, it, it really depends on what you're looking to get out of. So if you want, if you want something that's just easy, 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 easy to carry on a daily basis, or do you not mind putting up with a touch extra size and a touch extra weight to get a bigger gun with all the attendant benefits, easier shooting, you know, carrying more rounds, and so on and so forth. You know, that's uh, that's really how what's going to be the thing that decides between the two of them as far as as far as anybody goes. Like I said, both of them are incredible pistols. You won't go, go wrong in either case. And if you want to add accessories, the aftermarket is just loaded with them. And also, like I said, both are supported by the shapeshift system. So we have, uh, and uh, you can get a heck of a lot of use out of them that way. You know? uh, you could start with an open carry rig like this here, or you know, use that at the range or on the trail, carrying your 19. You know, get your target shooting in, your, pra your concealed carry practice. Then you just put your shapeshift kit together.
Boom. Ready to conceal. And carry. Whole lot of good stuff. I had, these are two of the most popular carry guns in existence for good reason. I, you can try and decide between try and decide between the two, but ultimately you get a great gun either way. Do there happen to be any more questions out there? Let's see. Tamaya says that he loves his 26. First Glock to use a Gen 4 style double recoil spring. So the recoil isn't too bad. He prefers the double stack uh, versus the 43 single stack grip. He doesn't mind the short grip. Two finger grip is all he needs. You know, there are, there are some people who don't mind that at all. You know, I, I, there are lots of, uh, you know, you'll get lots of user stories out there. Hit up a few Glock forums and, uh, you know, gun forums. You'll get a lot of people who talk about that. You know, I don't mind the two-finger grip. You know, that is not uncommon at all. Some people, it does throw them off, but there are some people who don't mind it at all. It, that's just personal preference. If it's me, I want a full grip. But what's good for me, what I like, you know, not everybody has to like it. That's totally fine, and I don't have to like what you like. Yeah. So it, you know, that's all up to you. If you find it's it's cool that the two finger grip is cool, hey, awesome. You do you. But uh, you know, that's gonna throw. That does throw a few people off here and there. Alan says finding what you like works well for you is a big deal. Lucky for me, I've got an Alien Gear holster for every pistol I carry. Now that guy right there, that guy has taste. That's what that guy. That, that's class. <laughs> yeah, and that is very important. You have to find the, you have to find the equipment that's going to work really, really well for you when it comes to concealed carry or, you know, almost uh, you know, almost anything you can engage in in life. You're going to find you're going to find something that works for you that might not work perfectly for someone else, or you know, it, or uh, you know, and so on and so forth. So it's it is really important to find what it is that really works for you. That's why you know. We and a lot of other people tend to, you know, tell anyone when they're looking at uh, looking at picking up a new carry gun, get out to a like. You can read all this stuff on the internet, and you can, you know, watch videos. And I hope you do. Click that subscribe button. You know, but that's not going to tell you the whole story. That'll give you the on paper stuff. Ultimately, what it's going to be about is going to be what do you like? How does it work for you? Get out to a gun store, handle them, uh, find a range that rents some, and shoot one. Even better. So that way you're going to find out, you know, the gun that feels best for you, that shoots best for you, and that's going to be the carry gun you really want to get. What feels good and what works well for you. Well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Alien Gear Holsters YouTube Live. We'll see you next week.